Hey, welcome back to Master and Kinemaster. So does it seem a little bit dark around here? What if I took this light bulb and added a little bit of light to the picture? Look at that. That's what I'm going to show you how to do today. I'm going to show you how to add point source light to your own compositions, artificially of course, using blending modes and adjustment layers and some other techniques. If you're interested, follow me on the other side, but first make sure to like and subscribe. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to light up your video artificially. See you on the other side. I'm going to start by showing you a completely built sample project and then we'll rebuild it. This one has the dark on the left side, the word click activates the light and the light part on the right hand side. Let's flip over to the full layers view to see what's going on. That first blue clip is just a placeholder. I do this frequently because clips act differently than layers and we're going to be using layers again here. Next after that you will see identical copies of the video content stacked on top of each other and you'll notice that they're split in half. So there's actually four. There's this and this on the left-hand side and this and this on the right-hand side. We're going to explain why there's two copies in a minute, but then underneath that there's the text layer or on top of it it says click and then you'll see there's three solid colors that represent the different light sources that we're going to make in the video. Now let's switch back to default view and I will explain to you what this second copy of the video is, but we'll do more with this in a little bit. What this is, is I'm going to turn the alpha opacity off on this just to show you, is what this layer does is this gives definition to the light bulb itself so it looks more realistic because if you light a light bulb up, it doesn't get covered up like this. It actually will look more like this. Now let's just take a look for a second at these three solid color layers. One of them represents a light that is hitting the side of my face. The other one represents a more spread out light coming from the bulb that is kind of hitting the walls and the areas around. And the last one is actually the filament, uh, which is lit up the brightest out of all of them. Now we're going to go and we're going to rebuild it and show you how to build all of these layers. Now I've got my new project and I'm going to add that color clip. Doesn't matter what color because it won't be seen. I stretch it out to the length that I think that my video is. And now I open a layer to add my video content. It's in my favorites and here I'm dropping it in and scaling it full size so the background color is no longer seen. After that, you want to trim and edit the length to the proper length before you add keyframes and lights. I'm going to trim a little bit off the right hand side of this and we're ready to go. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the background color and trim it to the same length as my content. And next thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the spot that we like to have our split at. This is the place I like. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to split at the playhead. Now, the left-hand side, I'm going to use Adjustment to lower the brightness. Adjustment allows you to lower and change color properties, so I'm just putting it down to a color level that I like. And now, I'm going to also take a look at the right-hand side, and I am probably going to lighten this too, because I'm adding those other lights later, so I'd rather this not quite so bright. So let's drop that down a little, then we're ready to move to the next step. Now we're going to start adding our artificial light layers. These are background colors. I start with yellow. I scale the initial one of them up to be roughly around this area. And then I change the color to almost white, but kind of a yellowy white. I check yes. And now we're going to go ahead and feather this by going into our cropping menu. We turn the mask on and we change the shape to this rounded rectangle back out and then set the feather as high as it goes to 50. Check the box here, and once we've done that, then we can go ahead and we're going to change the blending mode of this one to screen. That's going to brighten it up and kind of make it a more of a hot. Now remember, we're going to be adding more detail to the light afterwards, so don't worry if the light's kind of obscured by it right now. The only thing that you might want to do is move it a little bit, but there we go. We're good to go with our first light source.
The next one we're going to do is the one that lands on my face. So I'm going to do this by duplicating this one. I'm going to bring it over to my face and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, move it over so it falls on my face. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of this one so it's really almost white. I'm going to hit OK and then I'm also going to lower the opacity on it so it's not quite as bright and it's falling mainly on my face. So there we have that extra light hitting my face to create the light source. I'm going to add the last artificial layer, which is the filament, and let's go ahead and grab the yellow, but this time we're going to change it really, really close to white, and then go ahead and check that, and now we also turn this one 90 degrees. We will make this one significantly smaller, and we're going to feather this one out again, turn on the mask, get the shape to this one, go back out, turn it up to 50, and that's about what we want, and now we go ahead and go out of it, and now we're going to move it over to the area where the filament is, and so you can see at this point that we probably want to turn the opacity on the general shaped one down a little bit. So I'm going to go into alpha opacity on that one and turn it down. And then we're going to go ahead and reselect this and position the filament. I've stretched out my timeline to show you this, that unless you have a perfectly still hand, it's going to move the bulb a little bit, and it's up to you whether or not you choose to have the filament follow it or not. If you want to, then you use keyframes to do it, and I have videos on keyframes. I'm not going to go too far into detail, but you just kind of go frame by frame and move your filament to the position where the bulb is at that moment in time. I'm going to give you a little hint is that if you start to do this, you're probably going to want to do do a lot of keyframes because it'll look more natural. So it's up to you whether you do it at all, but if you're planning to do it, plan to spend a few minutes. It took me about 10 or 15 minutes to do the full version of mine. And now we're going to do the trick that adds shape to the light bulb. And what we do is we go ahead and we duplicate this layer. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change it to what I call a contrast layer. I have another video that explains this in more detail, but just for now, we reduce all the saturation in this layer that we've added and increase the contrast. Where is the stuff you may be asking? Go ahead and go to blending mode, change it to overlay and boom, you've got it back. Now, if you want and you want to add some more color back in, then go Go to the original layer and go to the saturation in that layer in your adjustment. I like it like this, but I might add a little saturation back. And then we have that with the shape of the light bulb popping out. The last piece is, is you want to also have on this side so that the contrast matches. Do the same thing, duplicate this, create a saturation layer for this one, uh, excuse me, create a contrast layer for this one. Uh, we go ahead and change the blending to overlay, and then we go ahead and we change the, the order doesn't matter. So we're going to go ahead and do that and make that contrast layer so that both of them kind of have matching contrasts when you go from here to here. And there you go. You have your artificial light applied to your video. So I hope that video tutorial was enlightening. Ah, I just had to say that bad joke. Anyway, remember to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments or ideas for future videos, I often do user suggested videos. And remember to get out there and make some amazing content with KineMaster, the best app for editing on your mobile phone. And I'll see you the next time. <laughs>